we are going to talk about how to quit your day job and become a stage and designer. Eight key steps to success. And what's fun about this is it doesn't matter, if, even if you don't have a day job, um, I know that you all kind of came here because you have this passion and love for design. So who is this for? It's for people who are new into staging and design, um, those thinking about looking into getting into the industry, real estate agents looking to get into staging, my veteran stagers, you're gonna learn a thing or two from this, design enthusiasts, color lovers, if this is you, um, go ahead and say, that's me. <laughs> go ahead in the chat room and put this. One of these is me. Great. Thank you. That way I know. <laughs> I know you guys can hear me. Great. Basically, if you like to see before photos like this turn into after photos like this, you're in the right place. <laughs> right? That is really all of us. Um, all right. Save your questions too, guys. It's an active group. Oh, another before photo. This one's a vacant done by my sister who is a stager. I love to share her work. And as you can see, she is rocking it. Beautifully done, right? So we'd love to see that. Let's talk about what I'm going to talk about in this workshop, because you guys know I always do a lot of different ones. If you've never seen my other workshops, um, I do these, like this one I only do once a year. So I'm so glad that you're here. And I do different ones. I have a trends one next, an e-design. So this one we're going to learn about the importance of passions. Um, I'm going to walk you through some practical planning steps for starting a staging and design business. And by the way, you do not need a four-year degree. I'm going to walk you through that. Um, but first and foremost, we've got to think about all the things we need to do to start our business or to think about maybe getting a business going and quitting our job. We need to really do a lot of self-assessing. That's where I see people make mistakes. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to get a little personal with you. Um, we're going to talk about your structure for taking a phone order for your design process, um, how to innovate your business, find your niche, use your creative genius. We're going to brainstorm a lot of different ways people start in staging and expand their business into a lot of different areas. Uh, and then I'm going to give you, I told you, a sneak peek into my pricing and form. So you're going to see what the service description should look like, what the pricing looks like, and inspirational stories all along the way. Um, I see that some people are having some listening areas. If you can hear me, uh, maybe... Um, Hannah, if you'd let them know in the chat that they probably need to turn up, turn on their speakers, the two of them. Thank you, Hannah. Audio is fine. You can log in again. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for letting them know if you could. I don't want to be distracted. I got so much to share with you. Um, but yeah, if you can hear me, you can maybe give them a tip. Maybe they need to turn up their volume or something. All right. I know it takes a while for people to get the hang of things. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay, who am I? If you don't know who I am, my name is Audra Slinky, and I started like the first kind of mixed media home staging and redesign kind of online training course back in 2006. I've been training, trained thousands of stagers and designers. Um, I blog for the National Association of Realtors and my own blog, which has been awarded um, some awards. I've won the recent innovator of the year award for 2013, 2015, 2017, and recently this year for my latest product. For really all my training products have gotten awards, which I'm really proud of. I've shared the stage with Barbara Corcoran, Sabrina Soto, Vern Yip. Um, but the thing that really gets me up in the morning is I absolutely love helping people take their dream of design and create successful businesses doing what they love, fueled by that passion. And if you've ever seen this logo, those are my people. If you are one of my people in my, have taken my class, then you know I get nervous every time I do these. So a little shout out, I always appreciate. Um, I did. I then I started a color training, and then I did an e-design training. These are kind of my core three main products that I'm always working on, and I love. Thank you, Diane. So great. Okay, but I was like you. When my boys were about this age, I thought, you know what? This is my time. You know how you go through those moments? And a lot of times you're going to hear a lot of stories from people. It's that change moment in your life where you realize life is too short to not really do what you love to do. And I, I did the same thing. I started my staging business and here we are now. Yes, I have a kid with a mustache. Isn't it amazing how time flies, right? How many of you feel the same? Right, this year is just crazy. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. 
because they're great. All right, so let's talk about you. Enough about me, let's talk about you. Are, do you feel like you are moving toward your dreams with real momentum? This is always, I mean, go ahead in the chat. Yes, no, maybe, trying. Where are you at? And I really appreciate you being open and honest because that's how we all kind of can connect with each other a little bit easier. <laughs> Great. I am very small in it. It's most important that you see my presentation. Yeah. And we all go through those moments. I am a new empty nester. I am going through that moment of what is my next? So I get it. Um, and some of us don't even know what those dreams are, right? What is that next thing? But I know that you're all here. I'm sensing because you were that person when you were a kid that decorated your room as a child or rearranged the space or always loved your Barbie homes. If that is you, go ahead in the chat and put me. I'm going to keep this really easy. And the reason I say this is because we assume everybody's like that. But we are a very small 10% of, of people who can actually see the potential in a space. And we're even smaller than that because we've been refining that talent, that art. So if that sounds like you, it sounds like that's what you're passionate doing. And you absolutely can make money doing it. That's what where I come in. That's what I've trained people to do. And that's, I know while you're, why you're on this call, but I want you to take a notepad or a piece of paper. And I want you to write down these eight things. I'm going to use an acronym. I like to do that because sometimes it helps you remember, but the fuel for your business is always going to be centered around that passion. It's always going to be centered around passion. I take it from me. The first business I started did not center around my passion. And that's about the time I was like, this is not what I want to be doing. So when it's centered around those passions, then great things happen. And we're going to go through each one of these from planning to self-assessing to what your structure should look like to how to get support, how to innovate and find your niche. There's plenty of directions to go, how to rely and trust yourself, how to say no when it's appropriate, and also how to just get started. All right. So passions, P, let's talk about planning. Here's some steps to just starting a business, right? You've got to consider your business type. Are you going to be a sole proprietor, LLC? Um, that depends on how much exposure you want. You want to choose your business name. That's the fun part. Here's a hot tip. Most of my stagers go into design. Keep your name broad. Don't just go pure staging unless, that's, unless you're 100% no, that's all you ever want to do. Okay. I love it. You guys are great. Um, reserve the domain and create a website, market materials, you know, and a lot of, a lot of times that scares people, the website, we have a website product because we don't want it to scare people, but I've actually, I'm going to share a story of someone that doesn't even have a website and they're still just killing it in their business. So I don't want that to inhi inhibit you at all. Um, I always say, start organizing, start creating space for you to create. So if we really are passionate about design, get into a home office, create that home office. Even if it's a little desk in your kitchen, you need that space to be creative. By the way, take a before and after photo and then start working on that portfolio. Start hitting those bedrooms. People always say, where am I going to build my portfolio? You're not going to have, of course, this multi-million dollar room portfolio right out of the gate. No one does. Everybody starts by walking. That's okay before they run. But do a friend's room. Do a room in your own home. We all have friends. You can just say, I'd love to redesign a space and start getting used to taking those photos. Um, and then decide, you know, where am I at in life? Is this something I want to do on the side? Is this something I eventually can do while I'm working. I have a lot of people who do this while working. So I want to encourage you. I'm here to share those stories too. A lot of people thinking about it post-retirement. Um, what are the costs? And that's another thing that really does inhibit people. But ultimately, I'm going to say, obviously, I would hope start with training and guidance. And I'm going to walk you through what I provide. Um, but you don't need certification in this industry. That's one of the things I've always loved about staging. And in fact, when I started my staging business, there really wasn't any training. So I did have to kind of go, what am I doing? <laughs> and it took me a lot of trial and error. Um, but you'll want some basic marketing materials. That's not hard. I'm going to give you examples here. Um, 
And these are your expenses, computer, printer. The fun thing is, is whatever you buy design-wise that you're gonna stage with is a write-off. All these things are write-offs for your business. And that's the beauty of having a small business. And ultimately, home staging is one of the least expensive businesses you can start that actually makes good money. That's not a multi-level marketing and you don't have to hard sell anyone. There's a real need for it. <laughs> All right. And here's the thing, a lot of people wonder, okay, where's the crystal ball? I know there's a lot of concern right now, but I'm going to tell you, um, you know, the industry is hot. It's been almost too hot. How many of you, if you are a stager right now, could say, yes, the homes are selling almost too fast. And in fact, I'll get the job and the home's already sold and I'm ready for it to cool down a little. Who's here ready for it to cool down just a little bit so the homes aren't being bid up and you know, coming up, sliding off the shelves because that's kind of the sweet spot for us stagers. Yes, Vanessa, I know I'm ready too. It's actually a good thing, making it more affordable for our kids as well. But um, the beauty I want you to know about the staging industry, because I was training and doing this and helping people start these businesses back in 2008, even in a down economy, homes especially needed to be staged to sell. Um, staging has become more of the norm now. Now, I don't believe that the price, that the market's going to tank. It's not going to be dire. Um, and that's the good news because the loans were good. These are just some stats I've recently pulled. You know, the housing market's not crashing, but it may be tempered, which is a great thing for staging. Even if it goes down just a tad, we cannot have prices go up 20% per year, right? That is unreasonable. <laughs> um, but here's the beauty, and this is one thing that people don't necessarily understand. This is one reason why I train on both staging and redesign, because I know that a good staging job turns into redesign and design is very hot. So it's a good way to hedge your business. A lot of my, a lot of designers, when people stopped spending on design during that recession in 2008, were turning to staging. I get it because staging is pretty economy proof, but a lot of my stagers are doing a lot of big design because homeowners have equity, right? They have money in their homes. And here is the most recent remodeling to remain robust and also just kind of continue to stay that way through 2025. And how wonderful is it, guys, that the supply chains have made it a little easier. There's a lot more easier to get product right now. Um, not like this time last year. So it's really interesting. We are in a wild ride industry, and I think that's what's so fun. We're going to talk about some of these things in the trends workshop too next. But basically, remodeling is still through the roof. There's so much need there. Um, designers are turning away a lot of business. Um, it's just people have money to spend, and they want to improve their place. No surprise. So a lot of people say, I don't, Audra, what should I do? Should I start staging? Should I start design? And I always say do both. Um, but I always say start staging first. And the reason is because it just gives you that straight and narrow, this is what I'm going to do first. And um, staging does not require large overhead, liability, certification for your degree. That's the beauty of it. Um, staging is the only cost actually to the seller that actually makes them money, actually quite a bit of money. And um, staging is a lot of design. I have so much design in my training because they are this, they are two sides to the same coin. Who are we designing for? The buyer or the owner? It's really very similar. Um, staging from a business standpoint has a very easy target market to connect with. And those are real estate agents. And when you have a partner and a real estate agent, you don't have to market, if you have five real estate agent partners, you don't have to be marketing yourself all the time, like many times you have to do in design. And also the stager gets the first crack at the new homeowner, which by the way, is the interior designer's number one client. So there's a lot of really good, as a business model, staging first makes sense. I've always been preaching that. Um, it leads more to opportunities, especially redesign. That's why I teach both. Here's a story I'm actually going to share our latest best of the best. I do awards um, every few months where we pull photos from our private Facebook group. And Mitch um, in Galveston, Texas is talking about a project. I'm going to show you his photos. Um, and sure enough, it was a staging job. And the clients were so happy with the staging, they requested their design services. That is really, really common. <laughs> uh, 
Here is his photos. Feel free in the chat room to ooh and ah, and you can see why they would do that. Look at the gorgeous amount of pillows on that bed. <laughs> that's, the beautiful, that's the beautiful thing about staging too, is you can make it all up and it gets to stay that way. Stay, stay pretty. Don't get used. Okay, now we're on A, assessment. This is where we're going to get a little personal, okay? Because I know that you've all said that you love design and you, and you or, you know, where do I start? I want you to start by envisioning what that perfect job would look like. And even if it's, don't just think design and don't just think staging, maybe it's, these are the people I want to work for. Maybe it's coastal design. Maybe it's, I'm going to give you some ideas a lot in this. Maybe it's baby rooms. Maybe it's just consultation where I get to put the puzzle of their space together. Envision your perfect job if you could not fail. Where do you see yourself? Go ahead in the chat room and put it down. I'll just be curious. And even if it is just staging, that is great. And design, that's huge opportunity or commercial design. There's so much. And then you have to ask yourself, what are the limiting beliefs that kind of hold you back? Because I imagine for so many of us, and I did read your comments, it's, you know, confidence, it's fear of failure, it's... Um, it's maybe I won't, you know, am I too old? Am I too young? Will people believe that I can do this? All of those things. And I just want you to know that that is normal. And everybody has those things when they start something new. Um, but it's kind of what you tell yourself and, and following that passion that's going to get you through. So Connecting, this is kind of a business thing that you have to do in the beginning, understanding your strengths and weaknesses. If your weakness is that self-sabotage in your mind, you've got to know, you know, that's a threat to your business and how do you handle that? Just self-talk, so important. Just say, I don't do fear. I don't do, you know, low confidence. I can do this. And every stager and designer will tell you in the very beginning, they always fake it till they make it. And that's how you get started. And it's very, very doable. Everybody does. I love it. And I love your niches, luxury market model homes. Um, so in Stages Connect, my private Facebook group, I asked my group this question in preparation for this workshop. And it's really fun. I just said, how did you reinvent? I want to use their stories to inspire you. And I hope you don't mind because I love hearing a good inspirational story. That, that is my thing. So rather than me tell you about it, I'm going to let these people tell you their stories. I'm going to share some of them that came up because I got in a matter of days, like 50 comments on this, which I love. I love the group is very, very active. <laughs> so Jessica has a background in marketing. And I know some of you said your agent, she was an agent for three years with a, with a real estate team. And the stager that they used um, was stepping out of it you know, retiring, what have you. And so she, Jessica always had a passion for design. You could read what she said. So she sat down and she wanted to talk to the stager because she wondered, maybe, maybe I should do this. And she said that the stager sealed the deal when she said that she may have to go to three home goods stores in one day. Isn't that funny? I know we all love to shop, right? If that's you, <laughs> go ahead and put it in the chat room. That's me. And remember, save your questions for later. So she's loving every minute. She's really leaning her business towards consultations and vacant staging, but she's been asked, of course, by some of her fellow realtors to also help with design projects like kitchen remodels and what have you, which she's loving too. I love all the possibilities and opportunities this industry can take us in. And it is really true. It's exciting. Yeah. Who doesn't love shopping? Even just shopping. That's, uh, that's my e-design one, by the way, trading. Um, Amy said she spent 15 years in retail managing multiple women's apparel stores. She made a 360 degree change, um, became an asset manager for 10 years, and then moved into consulting. But she realized it was time in her life to make a change. And she was dealing with some really major life changes. It's really interesting to me that we only really start listening to ourselves when we're going through those major changes, which is kind of sad because everybody tells me when they make that change, they wish they had done it 10 years ago. But now she's living her dream, doing staging. She actually just started into the training six weeks ago. She's already done three vacant staging and she secured her fourth yesterday. She's loving it. And my training helped her out so much. So I love that. Um, realtor partnerships. All right. So that leads me to the third thing, structure. Structure. You can't just go in willy-nilly. When you don't have a structure, 
clients can feel it and they know it. So structure that sets the expectation. Most of the problems you're always going to run into with people, even in general, or especially with clients, is if you do not set the expectation. What are they getting for the price? A lot of us hate even talking about money, so you've got to do that. How many of you on the chat do not feel confident so fear has been holding you back from doing this? I'm just curious because a lot of that is, go ahead and put me. That's fine if that's you. Because here is the truth. Here's the secret sauce that I have learned from training people. The most not confident people in the world. Trust me, I've trained thousands. When you have all the resources that give you all the answers, but more importantly, a very specific and structured process to follow for every service you offer, from the phone call, to the conversation, to the walkthrough, to the follow-up, to the contract, all of those things in place, you've got that structure. That structure breeds confidence. You're gonna look professional and you're gonna be very believable. In fact, your client is never gonna ask you, how long have you been staging? Because they trust that you're in control. Structure breeds confidence. Um, here's an example, you could take a photo of a, just a quick, if somebody gives a call, we have a few, we have these actually for every service. So in my training, I train people on Airbnb design, holiday design, redesign, staging vacant, staging occupied, staging model homes. But this is if, because very likely an agent calls in, because I am really big on helping them develop realtor partnerships. Those are key. And um, the questions to ask. Now the red means that's a vacant home and it, that means it's a vacant ready home. So they know. And the nice thing is, you're not as nervous when you have it in front of you. Now, does every stager after doing, you know, 20 of these still refer to this? Maybe not, but they have it at first. Um, better yet, I even talked to my stagers in my training into doing this. You can even have a forum on your site. This is HoneyBook. I sometimes show that. That's a project management system that sometimes stagers or designers use. Where you can actually have this forum on your site where you're asking them the questions. You don't even have to do it on the phone. <laughs> so automation is key. I do train a lot of automation. Another structure. This is another form that we give. This is um, a PowerPoint. This is for if people, I have two various ones, but the same price structure for vacant staging. So this is what a vacant staging services proposal looks like. The first one, PowerPoint, that I give, we're, we're telling them all the areas, we're telling them what they're going to do, and we're telling them the price and the process. But we've even upgraded this to now we have a Canva template, what we call the vacant investment guide. I don't know if any of you have seen this, but it's more of a brochure investment guide. So more along the lines of what designers present to their clients. And then it starts with kind of an introduction, why stage your vacant home, a bit about you, obviously thrown in your portfolio. And all of these I give to my members in Canva so they can change the colors, they change all the photos, they can, every bit of it can be edited, but as you can see, it makes for a beautiful PDF and imagery. But you can see in this, we outline exactly what they're getting and how this process works. We even talk about when they pay and we make sure they pay ahead of time. <laughs> so the expectation is set, do you see? So if you're a new stager and you're thinking about this, here it is. And we have, there's not one price fits all, obviously for vacant homes. So we have kind of four packages based on square footage and um, luxury level of the home, certainly. And so these are just some of the pages in it that I thought I would show you so you can see, yeah, Canva template. If you don't know what Canva is, it's free. It's a free marketing website that allows you to create all these things. And I'm gonna show you all the templates, some of them that we give our members to give you great ideas for your own business. Um, so that you can see kind of what it should look like. Um, so we even talk about, you know, what's the difference? Why should a client pick you? What's your story? What's your mission? Um, testimonials, and then of course, FAQs. So again, we're really creating um, this uh, in the training so that they can actually quickly edit and use for their clients. And then it just ends. Um, another thing, when I talk about structure for your business, having a structure for the way you approach a room, right? I know we all, you guys have been designing rooms since you were a kid. So you know 
kind of what your steps are. You just kind of jump in and do it. But I find that when you tell a client that there's eight steps in each room, that's the structure that I tell my clients to use. They kind of get it because they're not designers like us. They don't know how to approach a room. They don't even know how to see their home objectively. So these are really quickly the the eight steps so that buyers feel home that we kind of walk through. And it's really more of a sales tool than anything. But having that process that clients can grab onto is really helpful. Again, this is how I would describe the consultation service. This is kind of what I tell my clients uh, to describe it. And you can see they're getting a lot of bang for their buck. It's a walk and talk, you know, no more than two hours. This is for a 2,500 square foot home. So you can see we're setting the expectation, larger home, more time right? And obviously this is not a set price, depends on where you're at in the country. And I walk my clients through how they're going to get to that price. And I even structure their walkthrough. So we even have walkthrough guides. So when you're walking through, helping you write notes, we have a walkthrough guide in Word. So you can see a glimpse of what that looks like. Something you should, if you are a stager, should be offering to clients. And then we have our walkthrough guide in Canva that they can use if they want to look a little more dialed in. Because as you can see, Canva is a little a lot more professional looking. So we're starting to move most of our forms to that. So you can see structure breeds confidence. And that kind of brings me to my first special. Told you that I would have a couple specials on my training. I have not had a special on my staging and redesign training in months. So I know some of you guys have been waiting for this. So it's a limited time offer on the staging design offer. When you use coupon code DREAMBIG, up until Friday. And you should know that in my training, I give you all those forms. I give you all that structure. I guide you through every step of the way. It's uh, three weeks, but it's self-paced. You can take as long as you want. Uh, You have your membership is for a year. You can take a year of the three weeks, which some people do. And we start Week one, you're going to know how to stage vacant or you're going to know how to stage occupied homes and have your business foundation all set up. In week two, you're going to know how to do uh, vacant homes and how to price those, where to shop for inventory. I have hot links of stuff that I recommend. You can do it quick. How to, what business, what uh, partners to use with for businesses for that. And then we talk about marketing your business. I have a marketing plan for you and a bunch of downloads. And then week three, we have the Airbnb design, the holidays. It's really advanced training. And so some people don't even get to week three and that's okay because they're just going to do staging. But I've put it all in there so that you have it. Um, and all you need to do is put the coupon code in there to save. So I'm just going to say that special really quickly for you guys. The link is below this video so I can get back to my presentation, but I always like to tell people right off because sometimes they go, where's the special? Is this happening? (laughs) All right. Are you guys with me? Go ahead in the chat room, put yes. I'm going to go back to some of the answers I got from some people and some interesting stories because Boston Rob, we call affectionately Robert French, Boston Rob. Um, This is him in Aruba. He's there right now. This was his answer to that question where he had been a buyer for Clark's for many, many years in the retail. And he just was miserable. So he decided to, I think during COVID, he got laid off and he took the time to build this business. And I love that he, he loves the freedom it gives him. So he can set his schedule. He's in Aruba right now. And he made two holiday decorating appointments. Holiday design is kind of his thing. Um, And the local bank that gave him 10 10 banks to decorate, do holiday design last year is giving it to him again. So I love it. He's like, I'm truly grateful. I love it. And here is him with his mama when he did those banks. He's just a ribbon cutting in his town. And he's really created a great niche in his smaller town. I love it. Um, and that was him last year when he said he got nine branches. Holiday design is actually a thing, you guys. That's why I do train on that in the training because people sometimes don't want to deal with that, especially businesses. So I have a lot of, how many of you think holiday design would be fun? Or you're like, no, (laughs) I'm telling you people, everybody has their niche. Eve's niche. She spent 25 years as a freelance stenographer, a court reporter in Florida. She moved to North Carolina. She took a job as a court reporter. And she said every time she crossed the threshold of the various courthouses, a little part of her died inside. And I know some of you said that, that you're just some part of you. Sometimes it just, you know, 
and I get there. I have been there. I have been there. I have been in the situation where I dread going to work. So I, I totally relate with her. She talked to her husband and she said, I just can't do it. So this is her act two, focusing on her passion. And here's what's really cool. She's so focused on short and long-term rentals, Airbnb design. Um, and so poof, Cabin Ferry was born and she launched it very recently. She's not, she hasn't been on the train after the training that long. Cause in my training, I have, how do you launch Airbnb design and how do you market it? She manages 11 short-term rentals and she does redesigns and renovations for them. And she even does Christmas decorating too, which I love. Here she is. So you never know where what you decide to change or follow your passion will take you. That's why I always tell people, be open to your creativity. Start being creative. Be open to the direction, the journey that it's going to take you. And, um, and you never know where it's going to go. And meanwhile, I'm going to be talking to Eve because what I love is she's actually super hosting and managing, concierge managing these vacation rentals. So we're going to be adding that training to my training. I love it. Um, Let's get to S, support. You can't be an island. So accountability, whether it's with a friend, whether it's a spouse, like I said, in our group, we have Stagers Connect. There are some good Facebook groups. You can look them up under home staging. It's hard because they're not private. So sometimes, you know, people aren't as nice, but I recommend Risa Convention getting involved in our real estate staging association. Um, for our industry, we have a great association. This is, our convention is, every year in July. And it's just a great way to connect. Literally, our industry is filled with the best people in the world. There was, was us when we were at the M. I always host a um, happy hour, of course, like I'm doing right now, but this one's live <laughs> in Vegas. And, um, and this is where we all connect. So let's get to I, because I know where I want to get through some of this. Passions, innovation, niches, growth, solutions. You know, where do you want to take it? And you really have to think about where you're at. And a lot of people, a lot of you asked me, do I need a lot of inventory to start staging? Do I need a lot of free time, especially if I have a full-time job? And the answer is no. It depends on what type of staging service you want to do. And they really fall under two categories. It's really what I call the consultation-based business and the vacant niche business. And it's really a matter of if you have money to invest in inventory, if you have the flexibility of time, because a vacant job, as you can imagine, takes all day when you're doing the install. If you don't like the client part as much, I hate to say that, but it is true. A lot of my vacant stagers say they don't want to deal with people's stuff. They want a clean slate. And, and a lot of my luxury stagers do love that too. Clean slate, they're in, they're bringing the inventory, they're making it look just gorgeous. Um, that is you. How many of you on the chat, that's something that you would like? Basically, it's taking a room like this and a room like this. You're bringing in the furniture. A lot of times you can partner with a, um, a furniture rental company. Um, for the large pieces, and then you bring all the small stuff, as you can see. Um, that's Leah Ward. She's one of my members, and she's now, she wanted to go in and do luxury staging, and now she's, you know, staging for celebrities, <laughs> which I absolutely love. You never know where this is going to take you. Um, the consultation niche, what does that look like? You have some monetary constraints. It is, it is kind of a zero overhead business. When you're just in, telling them what to do, you're out. You're not investing in inventory necessarily. Um, you need some more time flexibility. You're just doing consultation, just telling them what to do. Um, you love to work with people and offer solutions. One of the answers to that question, she said, I love the puzzle of a space. I, I can go in there and puzzle their things and everything always looks better. Because here's the tip. Most people do not even hang their art the right height. And even though a buyer steps in, that feels wrong when art is high or too low or on its own, the little floater art, it feels off to them, but they can't really say why. So even just going in a space and changing out the art is, you know, revolutionary. Um, you like the challenge of working with people. Um, here is a occupied, and it's a gentle one, uh, before and after. And I think this was actually a redesign. So when I say there's the consultation staging. There's also the consultation redesign where you can go in and you can help your friends and family. That's why I always say you could start with friends and family and go in and um, redesign their space, do some shopping with them, you know, 
and you could literally do this in a matter of hours. Yeah, redesign is pretty awesome. And people love the idea of using what they have because not all of us have the budget to, to completely furnish our space. We need you to, you know, we don't, we don't have the thousands of dollars for that. So we want you to work with the couch. We want you to work with the bookshelf and then, and then help me with what accessories do I need to just refresh it? I don't know about you. How many of you guys have designed for fall yet? I love fall de decorating. I have my fall bins, not my Christmas bins. Those are separate, but my fall bins. And it just, right? Just makes your space look so nice. My girlfriend gave me a fall candle. Oh, I light it every day. All right. How do you make money doing consults? Because a lot of people say that I'm working full time. How do I get into this industry? Start in the consults, do consultations. You start, you know, going that route. A lot of people in my training, I walk people through that. If you did two staging consultations, by the way, this shows you your pricing, $250. Two, two hour staging consultations a week, that's 500. And one of them invariably turned into a staging day because let's be honest, the seller's overwhelmed. Um, they have a whole laundry list of stuff. They need you to go shop for them. They want you to come back before the photographer comes in and dial it all in. That's what I call a staging day where you're kind of helping them or you're just rolling up your sleeves and helping them. And then a color consultation on top of that, you would be making 1850 a week or 92,000 a year on a very little overhead business. The overhead for a business like this is your business cards, <laughs> the training, of course, I'd like to say the training so you're not reinventing and you know exactly what you're doing and you have a structure for how to handle your clients. Um, and that's, you know, your business license. So very, very little overhead. Um, and that would be only 13 client hours a week. So you could almost do this even on the weekends. I've had people, with their full-time job, do these in the evening, do them on weekends to slowly build their clientele and quit their day job. Um, if you added a move-in redesign like Mitch did, I told you his staging job turned into move-in um, redesign, there you're making well over six figures. Um, Sandy, I did include that just because I figured you had a day of staging, kind of reworking their stuff, and then maybe a couple hours of shopping. So what are the three keys to consultation success? You got to brought in your consultation services, right? Redesign, staging. I always say, and in my training, I kind of walk people through this. This is why I train on both staging and redesign. I think I'm the only trainer that does that. I'm not sure. Um, most trainers just focus on staging and then redesign or design is separate. But really, I think that's a model you need to learn because like I said, two sides are the same coin. You need, to, you need to incorporate both and then upsell the redesign. Let your staging clients know that you want to work with their items. You are very familiar with their things at that point. <laughs> so you can help them moving in. And usually that also leads to color consultations because when they move into a new home, they want you to help them with colors, right? Not just paint colors, but the new countertops they're getting, the new backsplash they're getting, the new flooring they're getting. Um, so it's how you easily expand. The reason I love color, and this is the reason why after I did my staging training, I created a color training just for people. And this is a three-day training, very small, not very small, but a lot more condensed than my staging, which is your whole foundation. And it helps you completely take the mystery out of color. You have a complete structure. Color offers a lot of bang for your buck. People are afraid of it. They're worried. How many of you on the chat have picked the wrong paint color accidentally? That's me. Um, and color trends are changing. They're training, changing so much that sometimes I look at people's homes and I'm like, oh, that home, you, you did that in 2015. You know exactly what year they painted it. So I'm actually doing two discounts, coupons. So I'm doing another coupon on my color training for those of you who just want to dip your toe in into color. Um, and I do have, especially my full-time workers where they're like, hey, I just love color. Color is my thing. Um, this, of course, won the 2017 award, but I'm, I update all my trainings every year. They're always you know, fresh, new. And basically, I mean, module one is just the basics, but module two there are rules to color. Some colors do not get along with others. I tell you how to use control color sheets to know exactly when you go into the space, what color route, what color scheme they need to go to. The space speaks to you. It is not that we can go, okay, I'm gonna decide whatever color I want. It doesn't work that way because there are items usually in the space that we have to 
blend with. And so it is more than just a paint color training. Like I said, it's helping you with fixtures, finishes. Um, it, it, it's almost like a design starter training in the sense that you can help people pick out all of their finishes. So a lot of my color consultants do that. They don't just do paint. Uh, they do everything for the space from the couch fabrics to the pillow fabrics. Um, and it is a very practical way to read color. And of course, my training would never be complete without cheat sheets. And I have a killer paint cheat sheet for both Benjamin Moore and Sharon Williams, the famous, telling you when to use them and why. So you know, okay, this client is, you know, um, a blue gray undertones. This is the direction we're going. Here are the 10 different paint colors that are gonna look best on that wall. So it's very, uh, pretty much formulaic, but pretty simple to understand. I just got this uh, message from Alicia, which I absolutely loved. She told me that she finished my course just a handful of months ago. Her website is not even built and she's been getting tons of jobs already. And she said her biggest job was with the contractor. Like I said, he flips. And so he's hiring her for all his flip properties to pick the paint colors, to choose the light fixtures, the flooring, the backslash, because she's putting that color scheme together. And I love it. She says the opportunities of multiple marketing channels are really endless. I don't even have my website up. I'm so excited about it. I've recouped my investment in the course, the startup costs. I can't just wait to see where it goes. So I love it. Those are the things that I live for. Like I told you guys, um, Patricia took my course years ago and then just sent me this, Hey, I just want to send you a big thank you, by the way because she only does color consultations. She's like, I just figured I do a little color consultant part-time, bring in a little extra money from my family. And then she's like, "I my part-time gig is now a lucrative career choice. I'm making very good money. I am solidly booked. And I always seem to hear the same comment that people know that she loves what she does. Because ultimately, you guys, whether you get into color, design, redesign, whatever it is, it's so important that you just love what you do. It's that passion that will fuel you. So let's get back to that. That is the code, dream big. Um, it works for both. So you can save 100 on both of my products. Um, and like I said, the links are below. Getting to that. So good. Want to make sure. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about you. How many of you trust yourself when you walk into a space for design? How many of you trust your design? And, and here's the thing I find, the most talented designers probably question themselves the most. <laughs> and sometimes the not as much or the maybe a little overconfident and that's okay too. Yeah, we're all like that, yeah. Um, but here's the thing. You've been training yourself on this probably longer than anything you've ever done because of your interest. It's your passion. And I always tell people that because we don't think of it that way when we're going through our magazines or we're watching our HGTV or when we're redoing space. You guys all said you did your homes for fall. I love that. We don't realize that, but your friends probably do, right? So you actually are a lot more solid than you realize. And I always have to just tell people that throughout the training because they always email me after their first job and go, oh my gosh, Audra, you were right. <laughs> I, I got in and it just took over. My passion took over and I was reworking the space and moving the things around and that people could not believe how awesome it looked. And that's just cool. I also want you to trust the law of attraction because so many of us have fears of, oh, I couldn't do that luxury home. And that's okay. That may not be your client because the law of attraction says not everyone is going to be your client. And if they say no to you, that's okay. That's not your client. That's not your person. Here's a hint. Usually your person is someone very similar to you, exactly where you're at in life. And so those are going to be the people you can reach and, and help. And that's almost your own like ministry in that, you know, that you're hitting those people, that law of attraction. When you know who that is, because that's you and you're putting that out, then you know that you're going to get the right person back. And that's frankly why I do these workshops, because I know that I am not going to be the trainer for everybody. And, and this is one reason why I ask everybody, before you invest in anything, watch the way they train, because maybe I go too fast for you, or maybe I, you know, it's just everybody's different and that is okay. It is a law of attraction. Trust your gut about people and just listen well, set those expectations. Like I said, say no, what you're not ready for, but know in your heart of hearts that you can do this. And I'm going to get back to some stories. 
some people who did not trust themselves. Jane, she was an attorney, then she was an HR, but her passion was always design. She never thought she was creative or artsy enough to make it her career though. Then when she was selling her home, a realtor commented on how beautiful the decor was and how she didn't need to stage it at all. And it was just that one person that lit the flame inside her. And she asked, the agent asked her if she'd consider being a home stager because the person in her office was moving. That gave her the incentive that she needed to go for it. She took my course, she formed her company, and she hasn't looked back. Go Jane. She can't believe she's in her mid fifties, finally making money doing what she loves. How awesome is that, right? How many of you guys feel like Jane? You're mid fifties. I'm, I'm in my 50, mid fifties too. And so many times we feel like our best is behind us. Jane's best is now in front of her. And it was that one person that gave her the belief that she could trust herself. Candace, she was a teacher her whole life. In her last job, she worked with young entrepreneurs. Uh, she realized if these kids could um, start a business, then so, should, so could she. So she had been trying to figure out what her next was and she stumbled on my course. Um, and she thought, how I would love to be a stager, but who was I to do this, right? She had that fear. She was just a teacher. But she said when she found the course, she knew God had placed that in her lap for a reason. She took a giant leap of faith. That's a giant if you never believed you could do it. And she's still in education, but now she's teaching taller students, sellers, how they can make more money on their homes. How cool. Addie was in corporate visual retail over the years, and she was a global visual merchandising director. Big job. And a lot of people in COVID felt this way. You know, COVID made us think, what is my next? Um, she thought as she was furloughed. Rather than waiting, she decided to launch a staging business. Well, back up. She got a real estate license. She was always helping people pick paint color, lighting, answers to questions. Are you always helping your friends with design? If that's you, go ahead and put that because that usually is a lot of people. Or you're selling your home like Jane and the agent's like, wow, your home's beautiful. Um, so she said, when the agent said to her, you should really start staging more than being an agent, she said, hell no. I like knowing how much I get paid every two weeks. <laughs> but then she started thinking about it and she really wanted out of the corporate world. So she took the leap and she never looked back. So it's cool. <laughs> I like to share those stories. I hope you're inspired by those. Um, finally, not finally, we're on N, knowing when to say no. Because sometimes, even as stagers and designers, I'll find that somebody talked to one agent who said, I don't, I, staging doesn't work here in our city. Meanwhile, there's stagers everywhere that is. But that no is what deterred them. That's what made them discouraged. So a couple things, just knowing, you know, you're, you know what you can take on. I've already, I've explained to you some of the business models. So, you know, you know, I can do the consultation. I may not do vacant homes right away, or I might just empty my house and do that vacant home. <laughs> not giving, if clients aren't giving you the whole story or the full information, then that's a no client. If they're questioning your process and your rates, it's okay for them to do that to some degree. Um, but if they are kind of beating you over the head with it, that's a no client. Because here's the beauty of owning your own business. You get to say no. You don't have to take them. You don't have to work with everyone. Not everyone's your person. Remember, we talked about that. If they can't spare you the time to fill out that order form, that might be a no. Those are all the red flags that I kind of talk people through in my training too, so that you can have that relationship. Your clients, your agent partners are going to be your best friends. They will be. Um, these are your no clients. If they have unreasonable time frame, expectation. But some of us need to just say no to the fear. Say no to the not trusting yourself. Say no to the fact that you're going to, you know, you're going to work hard. If this is your dream, if this is what you want to do, you got to put in the hustle. You got to put in the investment. You got to put in the work. Um, so there's a lot of little answers to that. And here is another before. This is one of our best of the best. I'll be showcasing tomorrow to an after. Look how pretty that is. I couldn't. I think that was an occupied home. She really dialed it in. And then S, for some of you, for a lot of you, 
because I know a lot of you have been coming to my workshops for years going, I really want to do this, but I know some of you just need to take that first step forward and you just need to start by starting. And I, I tell my people in the training, when you're starting, I want you to know that you're going to start a successful business. You're going to do that. Um, and whatever success looks like in your mind, you will do it. You need to have that vision and that mission and you will do it because creativity is like a muscle. And when you start flexing it, you will not believe how strong you can be. So start jumping in those spaces in your room, start taking those before and after photos, start building that portfolio. Because at the end of the day, we have this compass inside us, I always say. It points to our true north. What is it that we should be doing that we would love? What is our next step? Um, it's not a map. It's a compass. It's that feeling that we know we should probably follow, but those negatives are holding us back. Staging industry is the best way to start. I already walked you through how easy it is to hop, skip, and a jump staging to design and how I walk you through that in my training, how most of my stagers, my veteran stagers are now doing some form of design and it is in the training. I will give you the map. The map gives you the confidence to follow your inner compass. So it is complete A to Z training. Like I said, it's three weeks, it's online. You can take your time. I recommend people take their time. And really that first week is the core week. You have complete support. You got a glimpse of that Stagers Connect group where I got 50 comments in a matter of two days. Uh, yeah, there's so many people, but what do you think of this room? What should I do? You're gonna get a million design plans. <laughs> um, so you have that support that that is worth its weight in gold. And the reason it's private and I don't let just anyone jump in is because it is a safe, encouraging, loving space that it needs to be for people with budding businesses. My veterans are in there encouraging my new ones because I told you I've been doing this 15 years. And then my new ones are there just excited. Um, you can always refer back to training and that is the most important thing. Do, do not choose a training that you can't go back to because if you do a class and you leave, you know, you go away and then you're kind of rifling through your notes rather than watching a video like this and getting that shot in the arm prior to going to that consultation. But I do mixed media, so you have a large training manual and you got videos like this to go with it. This is why I do this workshop. Um, I love Maria's story. She's like, you covered every aspect. When I started, I was nervous, confused. I had a blurry idea of what staging and design was. Trust me, guys, I'm very clear. I'm very clear. I have design modules. I walk you through what to do in each space, how you handle this problem or this problem. Um, but she said she has a company she is confident about. And she was happy to discover I didn't, I didn't just cover staging. I cover everything, the business side, extra ways of making income. There's so much opportunity. Um, she said she feels like she chiveled off two years. Because you see, we give you all the forms. I don't want you reinventing. I don't want you reinventing. I don't want you ever looking at a blank piece of paper. You saw all those guides and forms we give you. It's look up, re-edit or not. What's cool about her is now her daughter and her husband run her business. And that is a dream that she never thought. <laughs> and it is a busy three weeks. It will be overwhelming. You have a lot of curriculum from day one at your fingertips. But I tell people to jump around, go straight to holiday, holiday design if that's what you want to do and that's what you want to start marketing and do that for your friends and family. Why not, right? Um, it is not linear. I am not a um, headmaster that's going to be hard on you. Um, you get a lot of support and you're going to learn how to have that platform for every sort of design service job that will come your way. So it's not just staging. It's not just Occupy Vacant. It's I told you it is everything. And here, walk you through all the forms, um, the price sheets. You can just change the pricing, the contracts we give you. I know everybody asks about that. Yes. The walkthrough guides, um, the, the how to's. I'm a big checklist person. As you can see, I like to be very organized. So a checklist, so you don't leave anything at home during your first, before your first consultation. Um, you saw the walkthrough report, you saw the vacant staging investment guide. We have things like this for you. We have in Canva plug and play brochures. You're literally going in there, sliding in your beautiful photo and your photos, changing out some of the text to your business and then print Canva. Canva is the cheapest way to get printed brochures. This is a brochure that we have for you that you could give leave to realtor offices. <laughs> um, and so you see we have all these designs and we even give you business cards. So you, this is just shaving hours and hours and hours, months and months and months 
if you want to start a business or maybe you've already started a business, I saw some of you have, I'm going to take the next three months off your plate. What's that worth to you? Um, and so we have these things for you. The discount coupon code, which is, I really, I told you, I have not given a discount on this training. I don't think in like six months. So, you know, they come up rarely, but it's a hundred dollars. If you bought both, it's $50 on this. It will be till Friday at midnight. So you have time to think about it. You also can rewatch this if you want to see screenshot some of these goodies. These are the things that we give you in Canva to use as marketing. I didn't even touch on marketing, but I want you to know your marketing is completely covered because we make you look like a rock star. We walk you through the scripts. Um, we give you these things, an open house checklist that you can give to agents, reasons to touch the agent. And we even give you like paint color cheat sheets, things to give to your sellers, things to give to potential sellers. Um, we even give you a guide to the elements of great design that you can give out to clients on your website to kick off design projects. And then we even give you all the imagery so that you can brag about all your give giveaways on social media in Canva. So you can change all the colors, text, everything. Um, Crystal, you have till Friday at midnight. I want to make sure I'm answering any of your questions. Sorry. Thank you, Cheryl. And we even give you the emails. How many of you hate writing emails? We give you all the emails for sales, the, your sales. What email would you send if they got that goodie from you? What's your next email? Because this is how you market yourself. You give them good advice. Sandy, social media is not necessary, but it's very helpful to you. I walk people through a marketing plan that fits their personality. You got to be real, right? When I said open and transparently you, you got to market to you. Um, and for some people, it's face-to-face -face or giving presentations. I have realtor presentations in my training for them that they can plug and play. Um, for others, it's, it is the email. It is the kind of, for others, they hit the phone. Everybody has their thing. And then some of it depends also on where you live, whether it's a metropolitan place and I have a whole walkthrough for you. That's why I spend a week on that. Um, uh, Jennifer, oh, confidence comes from knowledge. So investing in your learning will lead to confidence. So for those of you who have just been trying to figure it out on your own and don't want to invest in yourself, I have to say, you know, Investing in your brain is probably the best thing you could ever do. When you when we think of the way we spend money, um, that is probably the best money spent. <laughs> um, and Hannah will give you those links in the chat if you need them, but they are below. So if you click on the links below what you're watching this video, the two logos, if you check, click on the HSR logo or the CC, it will open up a new tab to show you the price if you put the coupon in too. Yeah, but it gives you... Um, a big difference. Uh, I love it. You know, Brandy's like, I am blown away. I paid, well, she paid for another course. And, and you know, I'm not to say other courses could be good. Make sure you choose one that you've watched the way they train. Make sure you see the way they do it. Um, make sure they're giving you all this value, all these forms so you're not, I mean, what would it take you just to create that vacant investment guide? I could tell you. I mean, I have a team of people that do stuff for me. Um, so if you liked an hour with me, if you learned something in this hour, imagine three weeks with me. And it's it's probably longer than three weeks of materials, but that's okay. You, It's resources for you. Because I told you, the only thing I usually hear from people, and you saw that in those comments from people, and I wish if you're on this, I wish I could share all of them. I had 50 wonderful stories. I can only share some of them that fit my presentation. Um, the only regret is they wish they started earlier. They wish they trusted themselves, trusted their passion. Um, yes, there's no cold calling. You don't need to. I always say, give me your passion. That's all I want. Because if you have the passion, I know you have the design chops. I know you do. And even if it's not as refined or as clear, I have all the design modules to walk you through that, to refine it, to know how to talk about it, to know how to talk the talk, if you will. Um, 30 days, I'm going to show you how to create a successful business doing what you love so that you can be ready to quit your day job. Um, yes, Stephanie, you always refer back to it. Um, you get a year access. And then some people even renew to get another year access if they want. And they stay in the directory and in Stagers Connect, they always have. So it's I know it's hard to see where that coupon code is. It's under the payment. So you could see Dream Big. And um, you have the option whether to to get the training manual, you know, the shipping or just download 
we're giving that now to people. Um, the renewal fees, $250. If you want another year, and here's the deal, I'm always adding and evolving to the training. So like that vacant guide, um, we added this year. So, you know, and, and at some point I have some members that t lose, they get so busy with staging, it's great. And then they're like, I want back in four years later. Great. Get back in. They don't have to rebuy anything. Once you're certified, you're always certified. You've earned it. It's yours. You get a certification in staging and redesign. And trust me, it goes a long way. Kathy, you are going to love it. The color course is less. The color course with the discount is $7.99. It is a three-day color consulting. This is the big daddy three-week staging, redesign, Airbnb. You know what? I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you again for spending time with me. You guys are wonderful. And even if the timing's not right, just start dipping your toe. Start being creative. Have fun. Um, because 2023 is right around that corner, right? Cheers to you. Thank you. Let's stay in touch. Um, and I um, hope to see you in my next workshop on trends because that's a fun one. Who doesn't want to put the crystal ball for 2023? And I appreciate you all. Thank you. Good night.